In this video, we will look at Zoom and how we can use this to do web conferencing or video conferencing or remote conferencing. Step one is just to go to zoom.us and you can see if you click here on plans and pricing that they have some great options. I would recommend that you start with the free option, which lets you host up to 100 participants in a meeting and those meetings can last 40 minutes. You can also do unlimited one-to-one -one meetings and they have a lot of great features that you can see here. There's also pro options, business and enterprise options as well. If you want to try the free account, you can just click here, sign up, it's free and then sign up with a work email address. You can also sign in with Google or Facebook to link those accounts and automatically get signed in. Give me a minute to sign into my account and then I'll resume the video. Now that I'm signed into my account, you can see here at the left some options for changing up my profile. I can upload a picture of myself. I can see what my room capacity is. There's some date format options, time format options, etc. Now I'm gonna to go to meetings by clicking on the meetings button and I want to show you how to schedule a new meeting. So let's say you want to hold a virtual meeting with people that can't be there with you present in the same room. This is a great option. Just come in here and click schedule a new meeting and then give your meeting a name. Maybe this is gonna be a board meeting. Maybe it will be a tutoring session. Whatever it is, you can title it appropriately so that people know what to expect. Underneath the topic title, you can put in a description. Next, I can come down here and select the date for this webinar or meeting. The best way to do that is just click here and type in the date, or you can also click this button to select it from a calendar. I will choose May 29th, and I can schedule the time for the meeting. Let's say 8 p.m. If I want to, I can set the duration of the meeting. Now, it's possible for these to go long, that's okay but the expected amount of time might be 45 minutes. Just notice what it says here. With the basic free Zoom account, you're limited to 40 minutes. Every once in a while, you'll get a free upgrade from Zoom, and it'll bump that up to an hour or hour and a half, but you can't depend on that with the free account. Browsing down the options a little bit, you can see there's an option to make this a recurring meeting. Every Friday, every Monday, whatever you want to do. Next, I usually just pick this, generate automatically a meeting ID. If you want to make sure your meeting is extra secure, you can require a meeting password. So the participants would have to know this code in order to fully enter the room and the meeting. I'm going to uncheck that. Next, you can decide if the host and participants videos will be on by default. And I usually put on for both of those. Do you want the participants to be able to call in in addition to using a computer? If you want one or the other, you can certainly set that up, or you could say both. Then we have some meeting options, and I have found these to be pretty important. I like this option here, enable join before host. If you click that button, people can join your room even before you get there. Let's say someone joins 20 minutes before you're even in the room. That's okay. They'll be able to sit there and wait for you. If you don't want that, obviously uncheck it. You could force them to be muted when they enter, and then you can unmute them later if you want. You could turn on a waiting room. If you enable this, when people join your room, they're not fully in the room. They're in a waiting room, and then you go in and start the meeting, and you click buttons to bring them into the room when you're ready. I think that's a good idea in theory, but usually I uncheck that. Notice that there's also an option to automatically record the meeting. With the free account, it only records it on your local computer, but that's a nice feature to be able to say that you automatically want it to record. I've found that when I don't check this box, if I want to record a meeting, I often forget that I wanted to record it, so it's good to set it automatically. All right, I'm happy with these settings. I'm going to click Save, and this meeting is ready to begin. Now, how do my participants know that this meeting is going to happen? Well, I could certainly add it to a Google Calendar. Maybe it's a shared Google Calendar and they can see that, or an Outlook Calendar, Yahoo Calendar. But for me, I've found one of the easiest ways to invite people to attend a meeting is simply to go here and click Copy the Invitation. When you click it, it gives some instructions for how to join the meeting. Now, normally, there would also be instructions for people to call in on a phone and just hear the meeting rather than see it. But at the time of this recording, Zoom is not including that by default in all free accounts. It's reserving that for the paying customers. But watch for that option to see if you have it. 
So I'm going to just click and drag to highlight the invitation. I can copy that, and then I could paste that into my Gmail or Outlook or whatever email system I'm using. Just paste it in as the message and send an email out to the group of people that I want invited to this meeting. Now another option, in addition to copy the invitation, would be to just copy this link. If you have had meetings like this before with a group of people, they might not need to know all of this information, they don't need to know all these details, they might just need this link. So you could just copy paste that into an email message or a text or whatever you want to do to get the message out. Now when it comes time for you to conduct the meeting, you could just go to your Zoom account, zoom.us, log into your account, and then click here on my account, go to meetings, and there's my board meeting scheduled. I can just click start, and what happens next may depend on the browser that you're using and whether you're using a Windows computer, a Mac, etc. I'm using Google Chrome on a Mac, and you can see I get a pop-up asking permission to open zoom.us. I am going to say yes, open zoom.us. Now, if you have never used Zoom on a particular computer, this may not work the first time. You may need to first download and run Zoom. And this basically installs some drivers and some files on your computer that are necessary to run Zoom. And just so you know, your participants will probably have to do this too, the first time that they participate in a Zoom conference. If you know that Zoom is installed on your computer, and yet it's not running, and you're not prompted with this pop-up, you may need to click here. I'm just going to click open zoom.us. It's going to launch. And now I get an option to join this web conference with computer audio. So I'm going to click join with computer audio. It's now accessing my microphone and my voice is being broadcast to the group. Now notice here in the lower left, it says click if you want to switch to a different microphone or speaker. So here's the microphone and I can mute that at any time. Let's say there's a sound going on in the room that I'm recording in. I could mute it so that the participants don't hear that sound. Just to the right of that, you'll notice that there's an arrow that you can click to switch microphones. You could either use the built-in microphone if you have one, or you could switch to another one. Now it is possible to also test your microphone and speaker. When I got that pop-up in the center of the screen, there was an option to test my audio. You'll see that the same option is here, test speaker and microphone and a ringtone should play. If you hear it, say yes, and then you can speak, and then if you hear your voice repeated back, then you know your microphone is working. You can click finish and begin speaking. In addition to the microphone toggle to turn it on and off, there's also a video toggle to turn off the video. When you turn off your video, the picture that you upload into your zoom.us account will be shown here on the screen. So that's why it may be important to include a picture of yourself. And then you can click here to go back to webcam video. I'm going to go full screen just so you can see all of this a little better. If you look just to the right of the start or stop video button, again we have some options hidden under an arrow button. So if I click there, one of the options is to choose a virtual background. And here are some backgrounds that I've used in the past. So I could select one of these. The first time you do this, you may need to download a plugin to make it work. But once you've done that, you've got the virtual background behind you. I'm happy with that, so I'll X out of it. And let's look quickly at the options that you have here while conducting a meeting so that you can hold an effective meeting with others. If during a meeting you realize you haven't invited someone that should have been invited, you can click that invite button and you'll get suggestions from your contacts or from email and you can send them a direct invitation to this meeting. You can also manage the participants that are in the meeting. If you click this button here, you'll get a list of everyone, and you can click and drag to put that list wherever you want it to be, even on a second monitor if you would like, and you can put your mouse on a particular participant to mute them or unmute them. You can also click the More button for more options. Notice below there's also a Mute All button and an Unmute All button. These are great when you just need to silence the room for a minute, and maybe lecture or do a presentation, and then unmute all so that people can talk. Here in the More button, we have some great options. Mute participant on entry. You can have a enter exit chime so that you know when people have entered the room or left the room. And you can also lock the meeting so no one else can enter. So some pretty good options there. Going along with this, there's also a chat option. If you click chat, 
you can type messages to the entire group, tap enter, and everyone can see that. You can also click to select not everyone, but specific people that you want to chat with. If during the meeting you would like to share your screen, you can go down here to the bottom with a list of tools and click on share screen. And here I could select a second monitor that I want to share or a particular application that I want to share and then just click the share button and people will be able to see whatever I have decided to share. Notice that you can also check this box to share your computer sound. So if you have a video that you want to show people, you want to check this button so that they can hear the audio from the video and also see the video. You could optimize screen share for video clips. Again, if you're showing a video, it'll make it look better and then just click share. I'm going to X out of that, but also know that there is an option here for not just one participant sharing their screen, but multiple participants can share simultaneously. There's some advanced sharing options to help you with that. That can get kind of complicated and messy, but if you want, it is an option. Notice that I have a start stop recording option. I'll click stop to stop the recording. You can also start a recording by clicking here. And then finally, as people are talking, you may want to give some reactions, and you can do that by clicking here on the Reactions button, and your participants can also do this. So let's say someone says something particularly good, you could click the applaud symbol, or if you agree with something someone said, thumbs up, and it's a way to just give some feedback quickly and without disturbing people. Now the next thing I'd like to show you is hard for me to show because I'm the only one in this particular meeting. But if you have more than one person in the room, here at the top, there should be an option to change the view. By default, I believe the view is whoever is talking will be visible real big here front and center. But if you click one of the buttons that normally is here in a larger group, you can make it so that you can see everybody's faces simultaneously. So I could have one person here, another here, and it becomes kind of a picture board or video board of all the different participants and you can see people's reactions simultaneously and it makes for a really good meeting if you switch to that all participants view. When you're done with your meeting, you can click end meeting and end meeting for all. That closes it out and people aren't gonna be able to continue talking, so just be aware of that. Because I set this to be recorded automatically, Zoom is now asking where to save, and it wants access to my documents folder. So I'll click OK, and it's now converting my meeting recording, and it's gonna save it into my documents. I'm gonna stop that, because I don't really need it. So everything I just showed right there, that really is all you need to know to get started using the free Zoom web conferencing service. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you subscribe, click the bell next to the subscribe button. That way you'll be notified when I post another video. And if you'd like to support my channel, you can do that through my Patreon account. Look in the description below for a link to that, as well as suggestions for excellent microphones and headsets. Mm -hmm.